The following program is brought to you by Pizzop Productions. I'm with the bruiserweight Pete Dunn, WWE UK champion. You have the first ever champion versus champion match on NXT later tonight against the NXT North American champion Ricochet. How did you prepare? Ricochet has held that title for a grand total of about five minutes. I've held this title for 450 days plus. I'm the longest reigning champion in the WWE. So your question should be, how's Ricochet preparing for the Bruiserweight? Well, I want to get your response. Ricochet said that he's been under this kind of pressure before and he's coming after that UK championship title. What's your response? Well, let's see how Ricochet fares in a high pressure situation with two broken fingers. Podcast. I'm Cody James with as always. Oh, what up, Cody James? I am Kevin Porter. What is going on? We are here to talk about professional wrestling and the week that was, man. We're coming off an exciting uh, climax to Hell in a Cell, Cody. We're here to talk about Raw. We're here to talk about SmackDown and NXT. Here we go, Cody. From my understanding, the, uh, the ending for Hell in a Cell was not very popular. I think a lot of people kind of shat on it, Cody, and we're just like, well, I guess not everybody's going to win the title when they cash in the money in the big briefcase. That was apparently answered this past Monday, and that's for sure, man. Well, no, I think it's the idea of they would have just been happy with the finish. Oh, well, yeah, this. dude. It was a, like we covered it already on the, on the review. Obviously, the finish was like, very I, lackluster in a sense of like a no contest. Like, I think if we went back and we were to count all the times where they've had, you know, interference and people breaking into the cage like mm -hmm. what makes this thing different i mean don't get me wrong like the brock lesnar going off fucking off uh going off t uh air last week on sunday um i enjoyed the spot with brock lesnar yeah. coming in f fiving and just derailing the fucking match i didn't like the fact that they just called the fucking match it's a yeah, no disqualification match and ultimately they almost did that with the Randy Orton Jeff Hardy match, but you know, cooler heads prevailed and they counted the fucking three for Randy Orton. So I don't know. Randy Orton didn't look like he was like he's a very cool head at the moment, but <laughs> yeah, I yeah, hear right. what you mean. Well, going in with our uh, sandwich formula, Cody, let's go ahead and cover SmackDown first, man. Our results coming off uh, this week, September the 18th, this past Tuesday. Um, we opened up with The Miz kicking off SmackDown, which was a, a pretty fun little segment here, Cody. We had a uh, Ultimately, The Miz teasing that he had a huge guest uh, coming on Miz TV that night. Um, ultimately, it was Maurice. Um, Maurice coming down and just doing her fucking thing. Um, I enjoyed the, the interaction between them. Then ultimately, Daniel Bryan coming down and the Shamans finish. And, you know, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? Immediate thoughts on that. Second, a little, little swerve they pulled on uh, Daniel Bryan where he thinks that he actually injured her or whatever. It was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Because at first I was just like, really? They're going to play this up? But they kind of explained it in the backstage segment later on that, you know, he kind of knew what was going on. But there you go, man. I mean, Daniel Bryan uh, getting one up on The Miz. It, it seems like they're retiring the whole um, Maurice Bree uh, storyline. Obviously, that served its purpose for the time being. I mean, we'll see if they book a rematch at uh, Evolution. But for the time being, they're – Kind of being uh, put put on the side in terms of the storyline. Um, now our builds up to the Australian uh, Super Showdown, uh, which is going to be a number one contenders match uh, between The Miz and Daniel Bryan um, in front of sixty thousand people. Cody, that's pretty nice. But I think what they're going to do is, you know, she's saying that she's not going to be on SmackDown TV anymore, but they're going to book her in the match, and then it gives her and the Miz this whole you know like what are you doing like you know uh, uh, you know they you think can... she's gonna cost him the number one contendership is that what you're saying well no at some point mm -hmm. on Smackdown they're gonna book her and say you know you're you're at Evolution mm. you, you and Brie well, yeah, yeah. at Evolution yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then it gives Miz and Maurice the opportunity to you know 
act outraged and stuff. Like, what are you doing? Like, no, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and, well, I think I think it's definitely a possibility that that does get booked, but... Um, you know what I'm saying, yeah, though? Like, I understand what explain you're saying. That yeah, no, I think, I understand what you're saying, man. Um, but at least for the time being, they're, they're you know, not going to be involved in the yeah. next couple weeks of promotion for the Super Showdown show. Um, I'm excited for the Super show- Showdown show. I mean, the kind of the more the build that they put into this week, like it, it you know, and especially with this match right here, um, I'm, I'm getting pretty excited for it. Yeah. So. I will be riding the uh, fast forward button most likely, but. Uh... Well, we saw Kofi Kingston in one-on-one action against Cesaro this past week. Um, this is setting up that the, apparently, even though the bar lost the number one contenders uh, tournament finals against uh, Rusev Day. Uh, apparently, they're runners up now for a tag team title shot, as it was announced that the New Day will defend against the Bar in Australia. So. Because we haven't seen enough of the New Day versus exactly, the Bar. Exactly, Cody. That's what I was alluding to. It was like this is some uh, just get me uh, get me through the next three weeks type of book in here. Which you know, ultimately, Kofi Kingston and Cesaro had a pretty fucking fun back and forth match. I thought. Um, ultimately, Cesaro gaining the win over Kofi Kingston. Um, C- Kofi did that pretty cool spot where he kind of bounced off the ropes and did the little flipping over the ring or yeah. out of the ring onto Cesaro. Yeah, thought that was pretty fun, man. So yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, what is else? up next? Yeah, we had uh, speaking of Rusev Day, we had United States Championship on the line here. Uh, Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura, which we ultimately saw. Um, you know, the seeds being planted this past Sunday uh, with Aiden costing um, their team the tag team championships in the pre-show. Um, what do you think of the segment kind of leading up to this, you know, with uh, Aiden English saying that, you know, he's responsible for, uh, you know, Rusev Day and it's not Rusev. Um, and then Lana ultimately eavesdropping, even though she was just with Rusev 10 seconds before Aiden said that, so it's like, where's Rusev? Logic thinking, logical thinking leads you to think that, but nonetheless, here we are. Uh, I think he's going to be about as much... Uh, I think Solo is going to be as popular as uh, Mojo Rawley. <laughs> well, I was, asking, I was asking what your opinion was of how they set it up, how, how they set up the spot on the turn, like with him saying that he was responsible for Rusev Day. I don't know. I guess it works. Okay. Not too much thought going into that, I suppose. Um, I mean, like, is, is he saying that because of his singing and the way he introduces him is why they... Yeah, he's taking credit for Rusev Day, you know, because, like, without Aiden English, there is no Rusev Day. That's what he's trying to say. But Rusev was already getting over, like, years before that when he was with Lana. Yeah, but it took it took an Aiden English, though, to get him over, over, you know, with the whole Rusev Day tagline. I mean, without... I, I mean, I would agree with Aiden. I mean, obviously, dude... You need your hype man. You need somebody out there pushing it, dude. So Aiden was a good fucking hype man for Rusev. So without Rusev, or without Aiden, I don't know. Was Is there a Rusev day? I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess I could see where you're, where he's getting at by that. Yeah. But I mean, he was kind of already getting over on his own anyways. But I guess the, the likable angle that they were going was, you know, with that helped. Mm, get right. that along and I mean behind the scenes if I was Aiden English I'd be kind of mad because they sort of used Aiden English to get Rusev Day over and then where does that leave Aiden English well, moving forward you know and that's kind of a, a good question in a sense is like what are they going to do with Aiden English right like I mean you, you assume that they're not going to do anything but what if Aiden English really steps his game up here within the next couple weeks and just really proves because he's already proved that you know, f- from going from the VOD villains to his oh, team God. with Rusev Day, I mean, he's he's he he definitely stands out as somebody that, I mean, for he stands out as somebody that can definitely um, up his Mike. status, dude. Like in terms of his presence and his character, like he's gonna he he needs to prove that he can take it to the next level and be like at least a solid mid card act. I mean, that's yeah. the next step for him. I think he's up to the challenge, bro. I'm an Aiden English fan. I like the guy. Even yeah. though he spoiled SmackDown for me, I was scrolling through SmackDown, or I was scrolling, scrolling through Instagram, and I saw a picture of Aiden English, like, ultimately turning on Rusev. And I was like, motherfucker. I wrote on there. I was like, fucking motherfucking spoiler, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I get, I get but you yeah, you know, some real heel st- shit. I mean, he's a bad guy, right? He's got to yeah. he's gotta play it up. But ultimately, in this match, we saw Nakamura defeat Rusev. Aiden English um, turns on Rusev, thus ending Rusev Day um, in an untimely fashion, which 
I think we said. Um, I mean, I'm glad they pulled the yeah pulled the plug already if they're going to go that way instead of doing the Becky Lynch or not the Becky Lynch the uh, <laughs> Bailey and the, uh, you know, the Sasha, Sasha thing where yeah. it was like, Oh, we're feuding. No, we're not. We're feuding. No, we're not. Yeah. It's like, what do you just do something? Exactly. Like, that's a good point. I mean, because yeah, no, that's a good point. Because like you know, ultimately, like you could say Rusev Day kind of peaked a couple months ago. You know, like yeah. they kind of it's just going slowly going down like a nowhere path. Well, even yeah, though they you didn't had, do anything with it. Well, I mean, they had Rusev got the singles title shot against uh, AJ Styles. You know, that was pretty fun at least at Extreme Rules. Um, but ultimately, nothing was done with him. Um, but even that was kind of a little too late because it's, for I remember a segment. I don't remember when exactly, but it, uh, I believe Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon were in the ring, and he was contemplating something of who to do with what or this or that and the other. And the fans just chanted Rusev Day, Rusev Day. Yeah. And I think he may have even announced something else. Mm-hmm. No, I remember Rusev Day was fucking over, dude. Yeah. That was over, like, Grover, bro. And they didn't really do anything with it for months, and then... Then the we're here. Like, now we're here. So, yeah. So it's you, like, know, yeah, you guys you might as, get another yeah. opportunity. Exactly. I mean, a money opportunity, motherfuckers. I should um, think so, so. Moving on. Our next segment was AJ Styles in action versus Andrade Cien Almas. This was a great back and forth match, man. I really enjoyed this fucking match. Ultimately, AJ Styles gets the win over Almas, but you had the pre backstage segment with uh, AJ Styles, you know, giving the interview prior. I really liked the psychology of like where he was like, you know, he's acknowledging Samoa Joe and what happened on Sunday. Yeah. But then he's like, I got to get my mind right and go take care of business in the ring. I really enjoyed that aspect. I think once uh, the Smoke Joe AJ Styles thing is over, I think AJ Styles with the belt is going to go with uh, against Andrade, and I think he may take the belt. You think they're just going to they're going to go all gender and just fucking just pull the fucking trigger and just let him have it? I don't think so. I don't. I don't necessarily see that happening. But it it would be like a, an upset kind of thing. It would. No, I'm not saying it's not a good idea or anything. I like Andrade Cien Almas. I'm a big fan of him and Selena Vega, dude. And it I seems like they, they're giving him a push. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely getting some good singles uh, competition like in there for sure. Like, he's not facing against Aiden English, really. Well, he's or, not. Or those yeah, kind he's, of guys. he's an he's upper. Facing AJ. Yeah, the upper tier. Uh, uh, Daniel Bryan, st- uh, people like that. Yeah, no, 100% agree, man. I think, um, I don't know necessarily if they're going to go with Andrade seeing almost um, title reign, only just based on the fact that the Miz and Daniel Bryan are already set for a number one contenders match. In three weeks, so I think ultimately whoever wins the AJ Styles Samoa Joe uh, match this uh, in Australia is going to go on and feud with either a Daniel Bryan or the Miz. I think they kind of sets it up there. So I think maybe if AJ Styles does lose the title, you know, like you, you got a Randy Orton, which we saw backstage with a very fun segment in the director's um, the director's booth or whatever. Yeah, where he, where he was like, "Yes, focus on okay, that." Yeah, with the fucking, yeah, that the was great. The and he's like, like, "My next victim." I'm like, "Oh." Randy's next victim. Okay, I like this. Yeah. But I was just like, oh man, can we stop with the air thing? Already? I love it, dude. Ugh. I love it, dude. Every time, every time. But nonetheless, dude. Um, AJ Styles, um, almost great fucking match. Um, ultimately, we saw Samoa Joe get involved, and we saw the the AJ Styles more or less get the upper hand at the end of the segment with uh, Samoa Joe retreating, but it was setting up their their rematch, no disqualification match in Australia. So. Here we go. Samoa Joe, AJ Styles 3, bro. What do you think is going to happen? Another bullshit ending. You think it's going to be... I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I, I ultimately hope Samoa Joe takes it, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not seeing it, but he may. Asuka versus Billy Kay. Uh, this is a kind of a schmoz match. Uh, Asuka defeats Oh my Billie god, Kay. And I don't remember which one it was. Maybe Billy Kay, but she does this... Awful attempt at the Fortnite dance, which is awful anyways, but her attempt at it was just cringy. It was awful. It was Well that whole line that they did, that little interview segment that they're you know, they're like um they basically did an audition for SoCal Uncensored, which is Christopher Daniels, Kazarian and fucking Scorpio Sky. Um because uh, they're all like all talking this is the worst town ever because they were in like Tulsa or whatever uh, which yeah Tulsa sure let's let's go ahead and call call a spade a spade dude Tulsa you're not that great of a town you know <laughs> whatever um, yeah you got Asuka and Naomi though teaming up man I mean they're at least doing something with them I suppose so the glow in the whatever the hell her fucking what, what with the Empress of Tomorrow there you go dude I don't know I think that uh she was getting uh, 
Oscar was getting a real push, and now she's just kind of floundering. Oh yeah, but at least she's on TV now. She wasn't on TV for the past like what month or whatever. I mean, they once that Money in the Bank program was over. I mean, she was gone, you know, more or less. So it's nice to see him on TV at least. And I like Naomi. I think you know it's at least getting him on TV. I suppose. Yeah. So uh, we saw that in the main segment on SmackDown, which was definitely the this is to me the segment of the fucking week, dude. Becky Lynch's championship coronation here. Immediate thoughts, Cody. Oh, it was great how she was uh, just being such a cocky bitch and, yeah. and just fucking with uh, Charlotte the entire time. It was great. Yeah, I loved I loved her just insulting Charlotte. And just, I love, I actually, I'm, I'm really enjoying seeing Charlotte trying to be like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I you're my best friend, Becky. Dude. Like trying to be the good guy because it makes it that much better when Becky's just like grinding it into her and just like, you're a piece of shit, Charlotte. You've always been a piece of shit. And Charlotte's like, no, I'm not. I'm a nice person. And it's like, eh. Which is going to ultimately, ultimately lead to a vicious heel turn and, I don't know. Possibly a short title reign for Becky, which kind of blows because Stole. I'm tired of seeing Charlotte with the fucking title. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna go on and say because again they're they're set for a rematch though right yeah. at in Australia. Um, I think Becky Lynch hopefully retains and goes into Evolution. The I don't think it'll be SmackDown. I don't think it'll be Australia, but what? possibly uh, where she loses it. Oh, okay, but possibly Evolution or Survivor yeah. Series. Okay, well. Even if it is Evolution, Evolution is still over a month away at this point. So, um, yeah, I want to see her hold it for longer than a month. I would definitely not want to see her lose it at I'd, Evolution. Yeah, I agree. I'd like to see her hold it until at least but based on, Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, so, we go into Monday Night Raw. I know we are jumping all around here, ladies and gentlemen. We kicked off Monday Night Raw with the uh, Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman versus Brock Lesnar. Being announced for uh, another event, apparently we have to cover Cody uh, WWE Crown Jewel. Um, it kind of set, it kind of gives you preface to why they announced this Evolution pay per view because of all the backlash that they got from the Saudi Arabia show here months earlier because no women were allowed. So what are we gonna do? Have another Saudi Arabia? Show? So because they knew that they were gonna have another show, so they're like, okay, well let's give the women what you know an all women show to show that hey we, we are trying which you know credit to them i mean they did create the show so um yeah i don't know man just a yet another show we're gonna crown have to jewel. cover <laughs> crown jewel which apparently your main event roman reigns versus braun Strowman versus brock lesnar i mean well, it, of course can't be aj it will never be aj it's never aj's never gonna headline a wwe event never bro. never ever never. so um you'd have to kill roman reigns and i think they'd still drag his corpse out there and let him main event this segment kind of set up the main event of the night also we saw baron corbin as you know obviously still the acting general manager Ugh. uh come out and basically put himself into the main event against Ugh. roman reigns um which you know i i kind of enjoyed like and i'm not necessarily a fan of baron corbin but like i kind of like to at least think that you know at least with him getting out there and, you know, because, like, you know, they, they say Rome wasn't built in a fucking day, dude. So I understand these people are kind of, like, learning on the spot in a sense. So it's not necessarily going to be the best right off the bat. But I like I like the whole idea of, you know, the heelish uh, general manager putting himself in the world title shot. Like, I'm going to get the world, you know, abuse of power type shit. Yeah, and then he I like that type of stuff. start the match so it could be well, a different... Well, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get oh, there. Okay. We saw Dean Ambrose take on Drew McIntyre, which this uh, was interesting. We saw McIntyre ultimately defeat Ambrose... Um, it looks like McIntyre may be on, in line for a push here at some point. Yeah, once he turns on him like Diesel did to uh, Shawn Michaels, yeah. You think he's just... Dude, I think Drew McIntyre is a, is a future WWE, uh, WWE Universal Champion, bro. I could see that. Yeah, he's a... Dude, he, the fucking... What is his uh, nickname? The Scottish... Uh, what is it? The so Scottish Psychopath? Something like that. Dude, that is a badass fucking nickname, dude. I thoroughly enjoy Drew McIntyre. And it's in, you know... Dean Ambrose, I think, eventually is going to be taking that solid heel turn at some point. So, you know, him necessarily losing at this point is not necessarily a bad thing. So, I mean, somebody had to go over, so I'm glad McIntyre did. It was a good match. The only question is, is if he turns on Dolph, isn't one of, one of them going to have to turn face? Well, I would assume one of them would. But I'm saying, like, Dean Ambrose, though, he's going he's gonna to go fucking heel. But, yeah, I, I would sure assume... I hope so. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to see Drew McIntyre stay a fucking a heel, dude. I don't want to see Drew McIntyre turn into a baby face. And I don't want to see Dolph turn into a baby face either, but... Yeah, one of it's going to happen. The one, but hopefully they ride it out for a little bit longer. Yeah, the one thing, though, with uh, Drew McIntyre is if he goes on his own, he's either going to need a mouthpiece or he's going to need to get better on the mic. You don't think he's good on the mic? I, I like Drew McIntyre. I think he can handle himself on a mic. I like him in the ring. I just don't care for him on the mic, to be honest. Yeah, well... You know, those, those scripted those scripted promos really don't do anybody favors. No, <laughs> so, not really. <laughs> uh, we saw uh, Chad Gable uh, versus Victor. Ultimately, Chad Gable, again, picking up the victory over uh, the, the latter member of the Ascension. Um, again, I told you last week, we're going to see this match a million fucking times, dude. Woohoo! Bobby. Filler. Thank you. <laughs> the Undertaker announced that Kane will be in his corner at the Super Showdown in Australia. Um, so we're kind of, you know, I don't know. There's some rumors and rumblings that out of this match, we're going to see something at the, the Crown Jewel event just several weeks later. Um, possibly a tag team match of Triple H and Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker and Kane. Typically, silence on a, you know, on a, on a, on a show is not necessarily a good thing. But in this case, we'll take it as... Eh, well, you know, do I really want to see this or really do I want to see it? You know, I, I want I to see tell. Shawn Michaels stick to his word and stay out of the ring. I don't want to see The Undertaker anymore. You know how much money Saudi Arabia is paying these people, Cody? How much money the WWE and Shawn Michaels and all these guys are, they're going to probably make a million bucks a piece just for doing that. At least a million dollars for a match. Like, bro, I, it's hard to say no to a million dollars for 20 yeah, minutes of work. You're getting the money from. Some dirty ass fucking money right there. The Saudi Arabs are <laughs> and the Saudi Arab royalty is going to pay them, and then they're going to charge the the hell out of the people in the venue. Mm. You know mm. the people that are that are up in the stands, not the people. Well, yeah, your 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 floor. royal family's not paying any money for that one, dude. Fucking, oh. they're gonna sit in their uh, their lazy boys the whole entire time. Like they did last time. Yeah, the kids, the last one, and the kids in the, the background one, are gonna be playing the whole time. I thought the last one was fun, but I don't know if Crown Jewel is gonna be as fun. And I mean, like this soon. Yeah, it's you know, and again, it's just an oversaturated market. But I mean, at least it's something different. I mean, you know, at least we're getting some some stadium shows. I mean, stadium shows are always fun. It's always fun to see what the venue looks like and whatnot. True. And, um, and it's a different country, so it's interesting to see yeah. how they react, which I know we <clears throat> we talked about last time, even though it was five hours. I hope this one was nowhere near five hours. I fucking pray that it's not five hours. That, that you know, it was kind of weird because at first they're kind of like a little nervous maybe. I don't know. But towards towards about the midway point or so, they start really getting into it and loosening up and cheering more and being more involved, whereas... Like say at the beginning of the show, they're kind of like, uh, do, what, 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 what are we allowed to do? Are we allowed to do anything? Like, <laughs> it's like, no, 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 you do cheer, you do cheer. They fucking, they had, uh, they had to get the, yeah. I don't know, man. It'll be a fun show, hopefully. So, I don't know. We saw uh, Bailey in action, which we saw Bailey and Sasha Banks bring out all the people um, for the Connors Cure. Um, um, drive that they're doing. I don't know. What's a campaign, I suppose, um, for uh, their association with the V Foundation for their fight against pediatric cancer. Oh, um, cool. I got to say, I got to say this just before getting into the Bailey's Dana Brooke fucking match. Um, was it the Super Messiah? The kid, like those kids that I, I've been watching, we've been seeing them now for a couple weeks now since they've been doing this uh, this campaign. And that Super Messiah kid, I fucking love that kid, dude. That kid is fucking He's cute over, as shit. Like Grover. He's over in my book, dude. I I kind of cringed when they first started doing the, the the segments, but just seeing that Super Messiah, I was like, yeah. And then he's got his like sister, you know. He's like, oh, you know, oh man, that shit. Like I I popped for that advocate. shit. Now. Yeah, that shit's cool, man. I loved it. Um, but yeah, so Bailey defeated Brooks. Um, you know, it's it, it looks like Dana Brooks pretty much out of uh, Titus Worldwide. She She's kind of like venturing on her own. Yep. So and, and now she gets to uh, leave, so she can go back to uh, jobbing and uh, doing nothing yeah. useful. Yeah. So this is kind of like the Chad Gable fucking ascension match. Uh, just more filler. I mean, I guess good to see that Bailey and Sasha Banks made a three hour fucking raw, but they're not really doing much. So they're just kind of twiddling their thumbs. Is what it is. Dana Brooke is hot, but she's doing nothing of importance. So you know. 
We saw the Authors of Pain with Drake Maverick versus uh, Local Jobbers. Again, Akeem and Razar um, defeated these said Jobbers in a D-plus match. Um, well, how I, long can we give give them local jobbers to try and get them over before we just go? Eh. We can do this for a long time. We can yeah, do this for you a long can go time. Face, uh, you know, the Ascension or one of these other jobber fucking. I think they can keep it up for a couple more weeks at least. Um, Drake Maverick, man. I mean, he's still he's still coming out. He's working with them, um, playing the dual role of two hundred five live general manager and the 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 spokesman for Authors of Pain, man. So well, I'm excited to please. continue seeing it grow, my friend. That's awesome, at least. But, yeah. uh, so uh, we saw Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler, and hopefully it's the blow-off match to their feud. I hope we don't see this match again for uh, quite some time. Oh, come on, we're going to see it. We're going to probably see it at, uh, you know, Evolu- or not Evolution. Well, we're, we're seeing the six-man, at least, at the at the Super Showdown because they got and, the and, Shield versus and, the Dogs of War, brother. And then we're going to have the uh, another WWE, uh, Intercontinental Champion between Dolph and Seth at the Crown Jewel. <laughs> it's a possibility. In Survivor Series. <laughs> All, right. All right. Yeah, and then going into TLC, that'll be the blow-off match, right? They'll be like, we're going to have to blow this off in the biggest match ever, a TLC match. Yeah. That's not exciting. You know, so they can pay more uh, lip service to Shawn Michaels. That's right, dude. Um, so, I mean, it, the ending of the match I thought was pretty fun here. Um, what did they rate it? It got a B. It got a B from the Bleacher Report. So, it is what it is, man. Um, we saw Ronda Rousey issue an open challenge here, which ultimately brought out the Riot Squad, dragging out um, a somewhat unconscious Natalia. Um, so, again, where, you know, it, just in terms of continuity here, what, a couple weeks ago, the Shield got arrested for, for what, beating up a bunch of people? Where the fuck were the cops there, you know? Where the fuck were the cops there? Fuck you, Baron Corbin. Not fucking double standard, bro. Double standard all the well, way. Women can get away with whatever they want, brother. <laughs> we saw Bobby Lashley take on Elias, dude. Uh, Leo Rush again uh, is being paired up with Bobby Lashley. You know, so I'm I'm enjoying the progression of this. Are they still doing the Elias thing where he gets interrupted and all this crap? Yeah, Leo Rush interrupted Elias to dis- oh, to diss the musician. We saw Kevin Owens on commentary. He basically um, went after Rush to the ring and after a bunch of impressive flips and an insecurity to Elias. Uh, basically, it caused the disqualification. Bobby Lashley loses to Elias in the disqualification, but ultimately, um, it, it, you know, Kevin Owens and Elias are going to team up to take on John Cena and Lashley in Australia. So, I mean, that's kind of what we're building towards here um, in terms of uh, the, the pay-per-view coming up. But I like Leo Rush. He's a good guy. So I'm enjoying it. Nothing else. No? No? Okay. <laughs> we saw Mickey James and Alicia Fox take on Ember Moon and Nia Jax. Uh, returning Nia Jax, I should say. That was a, somewhat of a surprise, I guess. Um, immediate thoughts on the return of Nia Jax, Cody? Well, I'd wonder if she got dropped or left the company. Or yeah, right? I told you, yeah, we, we addressed it, I think, just last week or something. that Yeah, she had like a leg injury because, you know... But she's back, um, you know, it's good to see Ember Moon because apparently Alexa Bliss is injured out of, coming out of Hell in a Cell. Yeah, she wasn't able to do the mixed match. Yeah, challenge. so Ember Moon ultimately took over her spot with uh, Braun Strowman. I like Ember Moon. I think Ember Moon is a very talented individual, and I enjoy her matches, and, you know, I'm glad to see that she's get, finally getting some fucking spotlight, man. Yeah. So... So your uh, Universal Champion Roman Reigns take on Baron Corbin in um, yeah well ultimately turned into a no disqualification match because like you stated um, Baron Corbin got himself disqualified but he's, then he's like oh wait I'm the general manager I'll fucking restart the match no disqualification so we ultimately saw the Stramaz ending with all the the Dogs of War coming out and obviously the beatdown that occurred um, I don't know Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin it was a pretty fucking boring match. I mean, it's a Baron Corbin, Roman Reigns match. It's a Roman Reigns match, which uh, <laughs> Roman Reigns matches, like I told you, or Hulk Hogan matches, just to add interference. That's all they are. The Hogan matches with the interference. Yeah. Which ultimately, again, we're building up to a six-man tag at the at the Super Showdown, so um, I'm somewhat looking forward to that match, I guess. I mean, I guess. I, I guess. <laughs> I like the shield. I like the... I, I'm enjoying the storyline between... Uh, the two groups so I mean again Baron Corbin Roman Reigns isn't the most exciting match but ultimately where they're going towards at least you know hopefully we'll have a fun match in Australia 
We can only hope so. We can only hope so. And let's go ahead and end this week on the best the best show on WWE TV, Cody. NXT. NXT. We saw NXT t- kick off with Dakota Kai and Deanna Perrazzo versus Lacey Evans and Aaliyah. Dude, I'm... The one thing I want to say is that yeah. at least when we, when we watch NXT, we don't see the same fucking thing we saw last week. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, the, the repeat of matches? Like, everything's a different match? Like it's a different match, different people. Usually, it's like. Well, it's like they cover they cover everything within a kind of a roundabout way. I mean, like we saw the recap of what ended last week with, yeah. um, um, you know, Nikki Cross and whatnot, and uh, you know, yeah, obviously, well, yeah, you're but not we didn't seen... see Nikki Cross and uh, what was her name? I, I forget her name, dude. <laughs> so. I do too. Yeah. But anyways, we didn't see them going at it again. We didn't see you know the same three or four matches yeah. that we saw last week. So. Yeah, no, exactly, dude. But, you know, kicking off with uh, NXT, we saw Dakota Kai, Deanna Perrazzo versus Lacey Evans and Aaliyah. Um, I'm new to all four of these girls. Same. I don't really know a lot about either of them. Um, but I do know that Don, uh, Deanna Perrazzo is the, the girlfriend of uh, the, the, the villain, Marty Skrull. I don't know. If you're, you venture off into Ring of Honor, New Japan land, he's a pretty... Uh, major guy over there in the Bullet Club. Yeah. So, um, Deanna Prazo on WWE television here. Um, I thought it was a pretty fun match. The chicks worked really hard. Obviously, the heels went over Evans and Ali, defeating Prazo and uh, Dakota Kai. Um, what were your and immediate thoughts on that match, dude? I thought they both looked, you know, really good in the ring in terms of being able to do the moves and everything. But they were also attractive, which is something that the main uh, main roster seems to be lacking somewhat. <laughs> Well, they, they definitely put their working boots on, dude. So they definitely came out and um, you know, put on a pretty fun match, dude. I thought, it, you know, and it was it was it was nice. It was nice to have the payoff because I don't know if you remember, but they set this match up last week yeah. with that uh, backstage like confrontation um, that they had there at Full Sail. Yeah. So it was a nice little payoff, uh, which was also announced uh, on this ma- on on tonight's on this um, this episode was uh, Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, versus one of the the members of Heavy Machinery, which again was set up last week, and they're going to yeah. pay it off next week. So it's it's nice to see that you know they they um yeah they're able to you know plan out several weeks ahead of time. It doesn't have to you know it's like you said you know it's a different TV show compared to what SmackDown and Raw is, dude. It's yeah. Whereas with SmackDown and Raw, it's everything like kind of has meaning in a sense. It's you know? the same thing every week, and by the time you get to the paper, <clears throat> by the time you get to the pay per view, it's kind of like. Well, this is real exciting. We've already seen this five times. Like, But what I meant by earlier was a lot of times in the main roster of WWE, you either have the chick is really hot, like say you're Alexa mm-hmm. Bliss or something, but her in-ring work might be a little, a little dodgy. I guess. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of these people, it seems like, you know, they're so new to the, the sports entertainment that, you know, a lot of it's kind of learning on the spot and just, yeah. you know, getting more comfortable with your roles. Um, kind of going back to that Nikki Cross, I hate it when we fucking blank on shit, but it was Bianca Belair, which, you know, again, after last week, dude, I became an instant fan. I found her on social media. I started following her, dude. So, yeah, paying, going back to that um, main event last week was really fun. I am a fan of uh, Nikki Cross after seeing that match. I thought that was pretty interesting. We saw Jackson Riker versus Humberto uh, Carrillo, uh, which apparently, fun fact uh, that they, the announcers had stated was Humberto, Humberto uh, Carrillo, which I'm butchering that fucking name. He's actually the nephew of Hector Garza, which he was apparently a part of WCW back in the day. So huh. that was pretty interesting. Uh, we saw so uh, Jason Jason Riker basically debuted this Wednesday. Um, he is part of the Forgotten Sons gimmick that is apparently um, I don't know what these guys are, but I don't know if you recognize. Did you, did you recognize Jackson Riker? Who that was? Uh-huh. Back in the day, dude, Gunner from TNA making his WWE debut this last uh, Wednesday. Oh, yeah, it's Gunner, dude. Okay, it's fucking Gunner, bro. Yeah, yeah straight up. So, um, yeah, dude, it was, a, it was a nice little squash match. I thought um, Humberto did some pretty cool shit in the ring, you know, even though ultimately he was jobbing out to to Jackson Riker. But um, what's your impression of the Forgotten Sons? Because it has um, – because Buddy Murphy went up to 205 Live, and I forget the other guy's name from – Blake and Murphy, right? That was the that was the team. And then, yeah, Buddy Murphy's up there, so um, Blake is fucking down there still in NXT. Now he's being paired up with the Forgotten Sons. I don't know, man. What, what do you think, dude? They're kind of like a – a biker gang-ish thing? I don't know, man. 
Were they the two that was uh, talking about Tommaso Ciampa and he comes up to him and he's all... No, that was Heavy Machinery. Oh, heavy he's machinery. A, they showed they showed the uh, the virginity or the virginity the virginity virginity. Um, <laughs> they showed the 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 package last week, fucking of uh, of these guys. They're like, oh, we're walking. They're like walking through some like abandoned warehouse. You're like, we were forgotten. I was forgotten. I was forgotten. We're the forgotten sons. And like they just look like a bunch of fucking bikers. You know, like fucking Sons of Anarchy shit or something. I think it could be interesting. Yeah, man. The match was pretty decent. Yeah, it was a, it was a just, you know, it was a fun little jobber match, dude. Um, we saw in the main event of um, NXT this week the the the, mo- the most anticipated match that I've been looking forward to in quite some time in WWE, which was Ricochet versus it was North American cha- Championship versus Championship match, a North American Champion Ricochet versus United Kingdom Champion Pete Dunne. Media thoughts. I didn't care for the ending, to be honest. Well, how how else are you going to set up a you know a pay per view without the Schmaz ending, Cody? I in mean, November. In November. The end of November, two months away. Well, did you really think that somebody was going to walk away with a a dual championship? Well, no, but don't set up a dual championship match if you're not going to do anything with it. Well, they kind of set it up in a fun, different way. I mean, they showed the build, the hype video going yeah. into into it, and it was nice to see that you know Pete Dunne's basically it's like an enemy of my enemy is my friend type situation, yeah. and you know ultimately they just dissented. You know, it was just like, well, fuck you, fuck you. Let's uh, face it off in the ring, and we got what we got. I mean, it was a fun fucking match, dude. Yeah, probably one of the best TV matches I've seen in quite some time. I thought it was pretty good, but. Yeah, I mean, the ending, we saw the Undisputed Air get involved. Adam Cole, uh, Kyle O'Reilly, and fucking uh, Roderick Strong. Um, I, they, I had nothing bad to say about it. I, I, pretty, I was pretty assuming that something was going to happen. I knew titles weren't going to change or whatever. So um, I, 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 I understand, you know, why you didn't like it, but I ultimately had no problem with it because it's going to set up a hopefully a War Games match with uh, War Machine, which I know they're not War Machine anymore, but it's War Machine. The Raiders of War and Pete Dunne and fucking Ricochet versus Undisputed Eric. Because hopefully Bobby Fish is coming back sometime soon. And we get a four-on-four War Games match. That'd is that be what badass. they in November? That's uh, what they do in January. NXT. That's what they did last year. They did NXT uh, War Games. So I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing this year. I'm that's excited. Good. I'm excited. So, all right, man. That is WWE TV for the fucking week, man. Um, obviously we have the super showdown coming up in uh, two weeks. Cody, what are your immediate thoughts for this week? I mean, come on, man. What's your, what's your take on the week of, uh, of wrestling, man? Ultimately, I liked, uh, SmackDown. NXT was pretty decent as usual. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't watch Raw, so can't really comment on Raw. <laughs> okay. But Not much to comment on, honestly. That Baron Corbin, Roman Reigns match. I mean, that, that may funny. have been the highlight of the night, dude. That was garbage. <laughs> Like, I saw that shit on social media, and I was like, really? <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. Well, you got to you gotta get by week to week, man. You know, you got to you gotta create something, I suppose. They just kind of throw shit up against the wall, and boom, Roman Reigns, Baron Corbin, guys. I love how they, how they have NXT super over, and part of why it's over is because it's cool not seeing the same fucking people in the same matches every well, week. Well, it's a one-hour show, for one. I mean, you Whatever. can't fit. You can't fit Whatever, fucking... and then we get on Raw... <laughs> Yeah, and they push this whole idea. Hmm. The people who the people who you know mostly cheer cheering, cheering for Brock the few occasions he comes in, mm-hmm. so it's a lot more exciting that he actually shows up. But now we want to make turn you against him, and we want you to actually cheer for someone you're never going to cheer for anyways, which is Roman Reigns, and we see him every week. Yeah. And he has the same fucking boring matches every week. <laughs> At least with the Brock, we only see four boring matches every year. <laughs> with Roman Reigns, we see the same fucking boring uh, Hulk Hogan just had interference match every week. Every week. Well, Cody, this is uh, ultimately what's led to you not watching Monday Night Raw, so at least you're saving yourself from the weekly Monday night you know, showing of Roman Reigns, and you only got to see him the, the once a month now on the, on the monthly God. pay-per-views, Cody. Thank God. You're dodging a bullet there, brother. So dodging a bullet like all me. All right, or... all right, motherfuckers. We um we will see you guys uh fucking next time, man. Any final any final words, Cody? This has been a fun uh, podcast. It's been a very fun podcast, and we will see you guys next week. Oh, 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 o